In this video, we're going to give you a quick overview as to how to use workflows. So I'm in a dashboard right now. I simply click on the left hand side to workflows and it takes me to an area where I can create workflows or I can see my existing workflows. And as you can see, I have some workflows uh, sitting right there inside this account. And I can see at the moment, I just have a missed call text back workflow. Just to let you know what a workflow is, a workflow is a series of activities involving triggers and actions. So on this initial screen, you're going to be looking at all your currently published workflows. You can click on all your drafts, you can click on your published, or all workflows, you can see we have one published workflow. Three people are enrolled in this workflow. In other words, three people have actually involved themselves in taking action into this workflow and being placed inside the flow. They're not active because they've actually ended the flow of whatever the actions were in the workflow. So the easiest way to explain this is to quickly click into the missed call workflow. So you'll see missed call text back. So what that means is there's always a workflow trigger. A trigger is about something happening. So what would activate this missed call text back workflow? Consider a flow just like a flow chart, a flow of actions, but there has to be a trigger first. So the first thing you will always see is this trigger box. So in this case, we want to react to people that are calling our follow-up Spark phone number, and we want to be able to react to their phone calls if the phone call is an incoming call, missed, busy, or voicemail. So basically any of our calls, incoming, missed call, busy, or voicemail. So if I click on this, <clears throat> it's gonna reiterate what this workflow is. This workflow is if anybody calls in and it's a missed call, busy or hits voicemail, what would we like to do? Well, let's look now at this trigger. This trigger is saying if we have an inbound call and the call status is busy, voicemail or no answer, this workflow is going to activate. So you can create this so that it could only actually respond to voicemails or only respond to no answers or only respond to busy or respond to actually anything. It could just be every time you make an outbound call, follow up and send a text message. Anytime you receive an incoming call that's busy, voicemail or no, no answer, let's do something. So this is the trigger. The trigger starts the workflow in motion, okay? So if somebody calls this phone number, what do we want to do? So the first action, as you'll see, is a slight delay so that when it sends a text message later on, it doesn't feel robotic, okay? So when we click on this step, it tells us that when somebody calls our phone number and it's missed, busy, or goes to voice message, we're gonna wait for a minute now I could just change that, we're gonna wait for two minutes. And we're gonna wait so it's not like this immediately automated response. We're delaying the way we respond by however minutes, hours or days we choose to. Now also in the advanced window, we're going to send a text message to the people that um, called us only on Monday through Saturday and only between the hours of 9 a.m. and 7 p.m so that they don't get random texts on Sunday or four o'clock in the morning or you know three o'clock in the morning when obviously that's robotic. So we're making this as human as possible. So we work six days a week. We work between nine and seven. And if somebody calls us and it's missed busy or voicemail, we are going to send a text message after a two minute delay. And the text message we are going to send is, is here. But let's just look at the flow for a minute doesn't matter which order these activities go in. And if you wanna add an activity, we just click on this plus symbol and you can add any one of these, which I will explain in a little bit more detail later on. So 
The next action we're going to do is an we're going to assign to a user. And in this case, we have a user, Sherry Morris. So we are assigning this missed call to Sherry Morris. Now, it might well be we don't have to assign it to anybody, but we're just assigning this person who, who we missed the call from to Sherry in this case. We're going to add a contact tag. Now, tags are hugely important, and in other videos, we will unpack why the tags are so, uh, are so important. But basically, a tag is a way to sort and segment an audience so that you know who they are and where they came from. So anybody that calls in, we're going to actually tag them missed call. So in our CRM, in our contacts manager, in our contact area, all the people that called in are, and we missed the call are going to be tagged missed call so that we know who they are. Now, it could be that we call them client if they're a client or a lead if they're a lead. But in this case, they're a missed call. So now what we're going to do is we're going to send that missed call a text message. <clears throat> so bear in mind, they just called us on a missed call. And the awesome thing is about this is that you'll never miss a call again because we're going to follow up by shooting a text message back to them. And in this case, after two minutes, they're going to get a text message. Hey there. Now, it's going to insert their first name if we know what their first name is. If we don't know their first name yet because they've never called in before or they're not in our CRM, it's just going to say, hey there. So just remember that. It will just say, hey there, this is Sherry with East Tennessee General Contractors. If we know their name, it's going to insert it, hey there, John, and it's going to pull that name based upon the number that they used into our into this text message. This is really powerful if they've already called in beforehand, they called in at some other period of time. Um, it's a good idea to put in their call. So she says, sorry, I missed your call. Please reply with the nature of your inquiry and also a good time to call you back. East, contract, East Tennessee General Contractors. So generally speaking, they're going to reply to this with the nature of their inquiry and a good time to call back. They will respond to text messages because it's been proven that all text messages are opened. Um, basically, 95% are open within five minutes. So it's so effective. Everybody has their phone within an arm's length reach. So they're going to get this text and they're going to reply to it. Now look at this. We're going to send a push notification to the assigned user. The assigned user is Sherry. And the push notification is just going to appear on her dashboard saying you missed a call from and the phone number. Please reach out ASAP before the lead gets cold. So that's in Sherry's dashboard. We're also going to send Sherry a text. So Sherry's going to get a text and we're going to, uh, a, you know, a text message to the assigned user. Well, we already assigned her back up here and it's going to say, and this is funny, hey, goddess. So I'm just going to put this on another line like that. Hey, goddess, you missed a call from. And it's going to insert their phone number and their name if we know it. Please get back to them ASAP before the lead gets cold. That's all we have to do. And now we're ready. We just go from draft to publish and hit save. Look at some of the other things you can see in the workflow. You can see settings. We are going to allow people to get that text message multiple times. Or you could just have it fire off once. So the very first time they call you, they get the text. But after that, they don't. Or if they respond to that text message, they never get this workflow ever again. OK, depends on how you would like to set it up. In the history, you can see all the people that have been added to the workflow and then completed the workflow. So it's showing you all these analytics of all the people that have been in here. It's also showing you the status of these users and anything that's going on in here, what the flow was. So you can see a full set of analytics on this workflow. So the great thing is about workflows, you can create as many as you want to. You can also create a folder and just have all of one type of workflow in a particular folder. You can create a workflow from scratch just by clicking on this green button. And then you can create a workflow and start it from scratch. 
or you can create one based on a recipe that we've already created for you. So we've already created these workflows and all you need to do is just simply adapt them um, to fit your needs. So you can see right here, there's a review request um, once you've marked somebody as a customer or as one. So you can use our templates or create one from scratch. So if we create one from scratch, we just click here. We're gonna create one from scratch. We're gonna create the automation. As we mentioned, the first thing it has to do is it has to have a trigger. It has to prompt something to happen. So in this case, we're going to add a new trigger and we're going to say when someone, oop, when someone texts the word, let's just say pool, because this contractor is in the pool business, right? Well, is it an appointment? No. Birthday reminder? No. Is it a call status? No, it's not a call status. It's not a contact update or a tag. It's not a custom reminder. Now, this tag is good because as soon as you tag somebody a certain thing, it could fire off a workflow. Is it customer replied? Yes, because we want them to text in the word pull. You can have it when a form is submitted. So if somebody submits a form, automatically create, you know, automatically put them through a workflow. Lots of different things you can do here. The common ones are definitely when somebody fills out a form, what do you want it to do? Well, when they submit a form, we want a workflow to fire off. Or when somebody texts a word, we want this to fire off. So we're going to use a customer replied and we're going to use In the reply channel, we can have call, SMS, email, chat widget, Facebook Messenger, Google My Business. Well, we want them to text, okay? So when somebody texts an exact match phrase, the word pull, it is going to trigger off this workflow, okay? When someone texts the word pull, it's going to trigger off this workflow. Now, as a little pro tip, I like to copy this and come back in here, and this is what I'm going to call my workflow. Otherwise, it just gives it a bunch of random numbers. So now what we want to do, well, it's always a good idea. Do we want to send them an email? Well, we could, but they've only, they're only going to text the word pull. Send them a text message. Yes, we are. Do we want to call them? Well, we could. We could leave them a voice message. Messenger, no, because they never came in through Facebook. Okay, these are just manual steps. They didn't come in through Google My Business. We could add a tag, remove a tag, add or update an opportunity, assign a user. We could do a whole bunch of things in here, add or remove them from an existing workflow. So explore all of these options. But for now, what we're going to do is we are going to wait. Always love waiting two minutes. So wait two minutes so that we don't seem robotic. Advanced window Monday through Friday between the hours of nine and let's just go between the hours of nine and seven. We are going to activate this. Okay, so it's going to wait two minutes. What do we want to do now? Well, we could assign a user. We could add a tag. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to add a tag. What do I want the tag to say? Well, I can choose an old tag if it's in here, and it's not, so I can create one right inside here. Uh, I could just say text, texted in, texted word pool, just so that we know that that's in fact what they did. I'm going to add this tag. So this tag is always across our entire system now. We're adding that tag. What else do we want to do? We're, well, they text the word pull. So let's send them a text message. And we can say, we don't know their name yet, but we could drop in the first name should they already be in our contacts. Hey, first name. And if they're not in there, it'll just say, hey, you know, thank you for texting the word 
cool reply and let me know specifically how we can help you. So they're going to get that on text message and they can reply on text message. Save. So they're going to get a, a two minute wait, add contact tag, SMS. When somebody texts the word pool, do we want to do anything else? We could actually wait one hour and send another text. We could wait, for example, we could choose to follow up with them and we could wait a couple of days or a couple of hours and we could actually send them another message to prompt them to do something else. But in this case, that's all we need to do. We've got text the word pool to this number, gives them a text message. Move it over to published and hit save. And now when we go back to workflows, we have another active workflow in our system. And just to see, let me just show you what a bunch of these look like, just so that you can see how useful workflows are in fact, you'll see a whole bunch here. I have one set up so that when anybody uses my chat widget on my website, they're automatically sent a response. Okay, so let's see how that works. I just click on this and it's going to show me that when a customer uses my chat widget, which is the little chat up chat pop-up box on my website, right here, the reply channel is chat widget. What do I want to do? I want to wait. Don't send them an automatic response. We want them to, oh, this take five minutes later, seven days a week between the hours of nine and six, they're going to get a reply. What are they going to get? They're going to get a text message saying, hey, first name, thank you for coming to the website. Now, the reason why I know this is definitely putting in their first name is because when they're on my website chat widget, they actually have to fill out their first and last name and their email address and phone number. So that's why the chat widgets are so powerful. So as you can see in the next step, I'm actually sending them an email. Here's the email. What am I asking? I'm saying, hey, and then here's an email that they're getting. Already know their first name. And then finally, we're adding a tag. And again, it doesn't matter which order these go in. I'm adding a tag because I'm calling them all chat widget. And it's just so that I know where my lead came into. My lead came in on the chat widget. And you can see that once they go through the chat widget, they get removed from this workflow because they've already gone through it. So it's very cool to see how this workflow behind the scenes is working. Just another little cool trick. You'll see next to the people that are going through the workflow, a little box here that can take you right over here and show you them, the person that went through the workflow directly in your contact manager. And so you're able to see the whole lead and the whole conversation so I can see right here how they came into my funnel in the first place. These guys came in by filling out the chat widget. The first thing they did is they found my website. If you look on the right hand side, they found my website. How did they find it? Well, through social media. They browsed my website for two minutes. That's the power of the chat widget. They then filled out my chat widget. If I want to see where that is, I click it. Everything's a link and it shows me exactly what they did. So they went to this website, and once they're on the website, they went to this chat widget, and they filled this out. How do I know that? It's got it right there, and it shows me exactly what they did, okay? So I can see the conversation started July the 1st at 11.06 a.m. They filled out the chat widget. What message did they put in that chat widget? They said, Will the guy Brian be back at the show tonight? He was awesome. They got this automatic response. This automatic response has been sent from the workflow I just showed you. And as you can see, it inserted her first name because obviously it knows where she came from. Hey, thanks for coming to the Incredible Hypnotist. So thanks for filling out the chat widget. So this is the workflow I just showed you in action, right? You can see that they get sent a text message. It waited a couple of minutes, five minutes in fact. 
waited five minutes, it sent the text. Then look, it sent the email, and that's the email on the workflow. She responded to the text. We responded back, so this is like a human response because she was thanking me for a show she went to see. And then in the next step, we asked her if she wouldn't mind leaving a review on Google, on my Google My Business page. So since she came in on the chat widget, we might as well try and get a review out of her. And guess what? She actually left a review. Let's see if I can find it. It's a recent review. She just left it, so it might not be updated yet. Let's just see. Oh, newest. There we go. Newest. There's the review. Look, 48 minutes ago, it's a new review. I responded right from inside Follow Up Spark. And this review was left right here on my Google My Business page because we asked her to leave a review. Okay. But actually, she came in on this chat widget. She actually went to my website, used the chat widget, it waited five minutes, it sent her a text, it sent her an email, we tagged her chat widget, there she is, and you'll find that if I go down here, it will say contact source chat widget, and she was tagged chat widget. So all I had to do was now turn this little conversation from this chat widget on my website and the workflow that it triggered off into getting me a new Google review. And Google reviews are so powerful, as I've just shown you, that you can text message them to leave you a review inside a follow-up spot, which of course is beneficial for my business. It's beneficial to help rank me on Google and to help me build my business. So you can see the power of workflows. Hope you found that useful and looking forward to talking to you soon.